Hello. Hello, welcome to our third day. And we're going to be talking about launching and growth. I'm very excited for today. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're well energized. Today I have been a little bit less energized. So I'm like, I'm I'm glad that I'm standing. And I'm recording the standing. And um I'm you know going to shake sometimes a little bit. Uh, participate as much as you can. Um, write the comments, say hi, and ask the questions that you want to ask. Today, we can uh, you can ask as many questions as you want. However, um, keep in mind, tomorrow we have a separate Q&A. So any type of question, and we've been seeing a lot of the questions here in the Facebook group, we'll be able to answer tomorrow. Specifically, we'll be just answering questions tomorrow. Um, so... Okay, now let's get started. Today we are talking about launching and we are talking about growth. So you got some goodies sent to you. Hey, I see the first comments coming in. Hello. Um, so nice to see you. I'm going to be opening our goodies for today. I just had it open and I <laughs> closed it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to open it now again. For those of you you don't have your goodies, every single day we are sending an email out. And in that email, you get access to all of the different goodies. So let me share my window. This one. And these are the emails that you get sent every day. And when you click the link, that's when you get access to the goodies. Every day, it's something different. <laughs> so today, you see some things that you'll be able to use on your own. We won't be able, or we won't need to do it together, um, such as brand naming. I think that that can be su sometimes such a struggle finding a brand name. And this um, brand naming workbook, I found that to be super, super useful. And it's actually a workbook I've used a few years ago to find um, one of the brand names that you see, like the ADHD planner, that brand name, I used that workbook. Uh, and it has become a very, very successful brand. And finding the name, I often struggled with it. And of course, now with AI, things can be a little bit easier. But I find over-reliance on AI can sometimes limit our own creativity. So I found doing the workbook very helpful. I still use AI. I use ChatGPT a lot to help me brainstorm. It's like, like a brainstorming partner to me. But uh, I will still um, try to tap into my own you know, ideas as well because then it's truly more mine. <laughs> and I think a workbook, this workbook is in particular, very, very useful. I want to also show you, um, we have some really cool tan Canva templates. Um, let me just open the other file. Mm. And it's very easy to use. You just press this purple button and then you'll be able to have your own file. Here we have a few different listing templates. Here's some examples of how they could look. And then here, just the template that you get to use for your own products. It's one of our gifts that we give to you in this workshop. And because something we'll be talking about today, which is the Amazon listing and the components that make a product successful or not, um, and having really good listing images in the end of the day does make a difference. And here are some so that it is easier for you to create a listing that does stand out. Um, so yeah, these are the goodies for today. Um, and one thing that we're going to be looking at together is the launch roadmap. I'm going to make this just slightly bigger. Awesome. <laughs> so this is a roadmap and it's also like a checklist. And here's some things that we want to be 
preparing for our launch. I'm not just going to go tick by tick by tick by tick because I think it's not going to be useful. I'm going to again focus mostly on the principles that are important, not the tactics. You'll always find the tactics here as well. Um, so let's get going with that. In order to really talk about the principles and what makes a product sell, there are two different ways that we can think about it. If we sell through a platform like Amazon, we need to always see it in the perspective of Amazon as well. Like everyone wants to gain something. Amazon, if they offer you to sell your product, they're not just offering you to do that just for you to do it, it's because they also have a business and they also want to gain. So it has to be a win-win situation. And in order for Amazon to want to show your products, they need to know, hey, is this product going to make our customers happy? Because Amazon is one of the most customer-centered companies I've ever seen. I used to work for Amazon directly. I, was, I used to be an Amazon employee. And in the days that I used to work with them, clients, like the end user, would be considered more important than even the nine-figure sellers. Like we're talking about like $100 million plus <laughs> um, sellers on Amazon. They didn't get like special um, rules that they could break or anything like that. Amazon was equally as strict with them than they are with a smaller seller. And the reason why Amazon can be so strict is because they never want to ruin their own reputation and they want to always keep the trust with the end user. So the end user are in many cases us as well, where we have the app on our phone or we go on our desktop and we buy things. Today I bought a lot of last minute Christmas presents <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and then Lego, Lego, Lego. <laughs> So I bought quite a few different things today um, as the user, as the end customer on Amazon. And Amazon is so successful and has grown so much because it has gained so much trust over the I trust that things will um, get in time, right? Like I was comfortable to wait until today to order my Christmas present because I know Amazon um, doesn't disappoint me, they will ship the product. So keeping that in mind, that Amazon has the end customers always as the highest priority. That's why also why they refund sometimes and some of the customers take advantage of it as well. They are very um, friendly. So if we as sellers have that in mind, we know that Amazon will always prioritize the customer, the end customer. They want to have products that people will not return a lot. They want to have products where people will not um, complain a lot. And they want to know that your product does sell. So if we want to have a successful launch, the successful launch already starts when we do our research and when we create our product because quality is going to matter. Um, having a good product and a good customer experience is going to matter a lot because you can't truly really trick the system for a long time. Um, it just doesn't work. And over the years, there are a lot of like these YouTube channels out there and they teach you like Amazon FBA and then you can like quickly on Alibaba get some random product and send it over. And while a lot of these people have like very short term goals they they just look for the next quick win but the thing is with that if those products are not in the quality that product will as fast as it took off it will also disappear we want to have long-term growth we want to have a successful launch and grow over time and over time and over time and have a nice you know we want to see a slide and not a slide downwards. We want to see the slide going upwards. <laughs> We're going to go up the mountain of success, not down. Um, and that's why having a successful launch really starts at the product development and at the research. Um, 
that's what we need to keep initially in mind because Amazon will only show us and show our product if the data is good, if your performance is good. So reverse engineering, I always like to reverse engineer because I feel like that success always leaves clues. And if we reverse engineer, that's usually how we can intentionally get to the successes as well. And it has worked very, very well um, for me and for many of my clients as well that understanding this these are the things that amazon is looking at so they're looking at um, how much traffic a product get like how many people are looking at it they look at um what uh what the sales were in a cer certain time they look at how many returns how the reviews are and so on so all of that is going to play into having a very successful launch so that's one principle that we have in mind but i was saying that there are two The second principle is putting ourselves in our own customers' shoes, um, seeing our own product through their eyes. And if we do so, we will only have a successful launch, one, if people are actually able to find us <laughs> um, on Amazon. Like who here really goes to page number five or 10 to find a product? Very, very rarely. I only do that with very few products, like maybe with clothing, I tend to sometimes go page three, four, five, I keep scrolling and scrolling. Um, I've noticed I've done that with like rugs um, and like some sort of like interior product where I just were scrolling to find the right size and the right thing. But very rarely, I usually never go beyond page number two. And you will find your customers also very rarely will go beyond page number two. So in order to then launch successfully, one of our main things is, hey, we need to be visible. And in order to be visible, we need to have one, um, good ranking traffic. And on the other side, we need to have a listing page that is going to stand out. And um, we need to be noticed. And in order for us to prep for all of these different things, we want to have in mind what all is in a listing. Uh, I'm actually going to show you an Amazon um, page first. Let's take the uh, example of the famous five-minute journal. Has anyone here bought the five-minute journal ever? Um, uh, let me see. I bought it. I think the first time I bought it was 2015. I've, I really liked it. I thought it was such a beautiful idea. Um, here it is. Let's look. Five minute journal. There it is. The beautiful five minute journal. <clears throat> um, I got it here as well. In person, it doesn't look as beautiful as it looks in the pictures. <laughs> um, I don't like the size. I find it's too thin. I think making it just a little bit thicker would have been beneficial. But other than that, this is a phenomenal product. I'm, I'm not going to like um, talk bad about it because it's really phenomenal. I'm just like, you know, I'm complaining on a very high. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you say that in English as well? In German, you we say that. Um, complaining on a high level, it means that when you complain about things that really don't matter that much anymore, it's just like looking for something that is wrong. That's basically what I'm doing. Like as if I was looking for something wrong, because this is a phenomenal product and it would be just a slight change that I would I would do if if it was mine. Um, okay, so um, we have the five minute journal. The reason why they're getting so many sales are a lot of different reasons. Of course, they have a social media presence and things like that. That, however, is not needed. And I'm going to be talking about social media as well today. I'm going to talk about influences. I'm going to talk about a few different things that you can choose to do. And I'm going to tell you if you really have to do it and if I do it and what 
is all needed in order to have a successful launch. <clears throat> but let's stay with the principles. We want to stand out and we want to see our own product through the eyes of the end user. So now imagine yourself, hey, I am Laura and I'm looking for a motivational gratitude type of journal. Um, so let's actually put in gratitude journal then instead. Gratitude journal. And I'm just looking for different options. Now... Um, here you will notice there are some fake ones as well. Unfortunate, but that's what it is. Um, big players tend to have some copycats. And unfortunately, I don't know why this brand is not doing anything against them. Like you could just report them. Like, I mean, that's like pretty obvious. <laughs> um, but, you know, everyone runs their business differently. It, maybe they're not noticing the difference in your sales enough to to really do anything about it but okay so i'm looking for a gratitude journal i'm now looking from my perspective i'm scrolling down the style definitely looks nice to me it would be something that stands out um they now have a limited time deal that also um is of course very makes it very interesting um yeah, a lot of the other journals, um, they are also nice. It's not like they're not nice. This is a beautiful video. Um, it is cheaper, but I would still be more attracted to this one because that style just resonates a little bit more with what I like. Mm, I see some KDP ones here. KDP usually doesn't stand out as nicely because they are not able to use photography. And oftentimes people ask me, how do you recognize KDP? I recognize it by a few things. It says paperback here. And then it just looks like a flat image. And um, you see it's not photography. It's just like, it looks like a poster, like just a flat image. And that's how I recognize KDP. Um, we see there's quite a few KDP journals um, available. And then there are, there is this as a gratitude journal, the five minute journal is available. Let's look, look at it and let's look at what is important for a listing. We have a few different components here when it comes to a listing. So we have the main image. The main image is always on white background. We have additional images. Um, you have seven spots here in total. However, if you use video, you have space for six photos and video. Um, if you have more than one video, it will always show at the same place. So if I, I'm not going to click on this now because it will immediately play and it will have sound. Um, but once I click on it, I will see um, almost like a playlist of different videos. Um, there are different types of photos uh, that you would always want to have. And the reason is because we are still um, looking through the eyes of our customer and our customers will all be a little bit different. Some are more the logical um, decisions makers. Some are more the emotional decision makers. In the end of the day, everyone makes a decision because of an emotion, but some people need more logical points to have the emotion of feeling confident about it, to feel well informed, and then to make the decision. <clears throat> now here we see a few different things that they are doing. They are starting with social proof. They have sold over 1.7 million. I think they've sold over two point something million by now. Um, this is a pretty old image. It's been the same image for over a year. <clears throat> um, but for them, it's, I mean, it doesn't really make a difference anymore if you sold 1.7 or two point something million uh, uh, potato, potato, right? Like it's at that level, it's, it's the same thing. Um, and they started with social proof, which is a very good thing because we as social creatures, we like it if someone else has bought what we want to buy already because then we feel like 
um, there's not a lot of, ah, sorry, I was just scared for a second and I'm not sharing my screen. Um, I just had to quickly check. Um, so we as social creatures, we like to have very little risk, very little perceived risk when we buy something. That's why, have you ever seen a product that looks really cool, but it has zero reviews? Like, do you also feel like a little bit of like, Ugh. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like even though it looks beautiful, it there is a bit of a feeling of a higher perceived risk. This type of product, when they don't have any reviews or have very few reviews, we tend to look a little bit closer. And the vast majority of people will be a little bit more critical and be more like, huh, is this really good? What are the photos? They will be looking more back and forth. They put it into their card, but maybe they're not going to buy it right away, right? Social proof, knowing that many other people have bought it, is very reassuring. Now, we cannot do that, of course, if we have not gotten sales yet. So this only works if we, after a certain point of time. What would be an alternative for us to do? An alternative for us to do is to try to get reviews as quickly as possible. And thank goodness Amazon has a reviewer program. We can pay $200 um, you don't need to need to need to know the details right now because I think that doesn't really help with the presentation today. But what I want you to know is that you don't need to freak out about getting reviews because there are ways that Amazon can um, offer you a service to get reviews. And I always use that service to get the reviews because they are just essential. Now, a different way to get, give a person, however, a comfortable feeling if we don't have the social proof ahead of time is by giving lifestyle context images. Um, with lifestyle context images, I mean images like this. I think this is not too great yet because here the person is only holding the journal. It would be a lot smarter and nicer to show the interior pages of the journal filled out. That usually works a lot better. Um, you want to show the, the product in use because that's how people can imagine a lot more using it as well. This is a, I mean, it's still a very beautiful image and I think it is a nice complimentary image that can be on like um, as an addition, but I would have always had also like uh, an image showing the the interior and it being filled out. Um, I'm <laughs> uh, it's funny. Um, I was just thinking at this moment, uh, I have to make quite a few changes to my own <laughs> lifting <laughs> because um, my photos are not up to uh, to the level where I would like them to have. So while well, I'm telling you all of this, it doesn't need to be perfection right away. As you can see with my own product, they sell even though um, the images are not to the perfection. I would probably have sold a lot more if I worked on that. And this is something that I'm focusing for next year because there's something called conversion rate. Conversion rate means what is the percentage of people that buy the product once they have seen it, once they have seen your listing, once they have seen the photos, they have read through it. For some of my products, the conversion rate are lower than what I would want them. And I know by just making a few changes, the next year I'm, I'm sending my products to a photographer again. I'm wanting to have a few more lifestyle shots, a few more photos done to show my product from different angles, um, to overcome certain objections. I want to also add some social proof because by now we've sold so many copies, I can also put some social proof in it. Um, I I'm still working with the same images I used three, two, two and a half years or two and a half years ago, roughly, or two years ago um, with some of my um, products, the main, like the images that I just started with. <clears throat> but one thing that I have in the images is always showing the product in some lifestyle context, showing the interior pages 
so important for a doona very very important of course if you're selling any other type of product because not everyone here is going to sell journals you want to put yourself in your customer's shoes like if you're buying something like what would you want to know about it like if you're buying a rug it is nice to have a close-up image and if it's like a very fluffy one and it's helpful to see like the hand in it and see how how fluffy it is right if let's say you're selling creams you want to see the texture of the cream right um do do things that we cannot do when we buy online that we can do when we buy offline if you buy something offline for example you're buying now affirmation cards offline you're trying to see like how do these affirmation cards actually look like like what is on them so for the images and we can actually look at this product as well um actually let's do that i think that's a nice example um because i think the listing is very good it's very affirmation card here we go i'm not going to press on this one because it's an ad i don't want her to have to pay anything here okay this <clears throat> Um, here we we had to do a little bit of blurring any swear words. So we have a bit of censoring here just to make sure that we have no issues with Amazon. So here there's a little bit of blurring. I would actually suggest reducing the blurring a little bit more. But if we now look at the different components, we're showing the product on white background. Here we are showing the packaging and we're showing some of the products. So the person can see, um, this is a pile of cards. Um, they can also see the design already. It's very important that the cards are also shown here on the main image. Then another image is basically showing the front of the card and the back of the card and showing a few different examples. Here you see that we have some just hold some positive mixed with like in your face with like some sweary swear words <laughs> um, we have a little bit of a lifestyle context um, so this is without hands it would have been even better if there's a hand um, but <clears throat> that was a little bit harder um, to to get um, from the photographer so in this case we said that's fine this is still lifestyle context enough we see like a little bit of a laptop we see a little bit of a cup um, and that gives us enough to make it um, in like as a bio like we can imagine it a little bit more in a lifestyle context and a lot of these things as as bios that we do are often subconscious like I doubt when you go on, um, on the Amazon app, you'll be looking at the images and like, huh, now I can imagine this product in my own life. Like, that's not the thought process that goes through. It's, it's something that happens. It's like a first impression. It's something that happens in the back of our mind in an instant. We see an image and here we see, okay, there's a journal, a notebook, so people could also be using it to, you know, maybe journal about it, something like that. And we we grasp it immediately without actually really having to think about it. And it gives us a nice um, idea. Here we have a little bit more of the logical side because as I was telling you, it's not all about the, the emotional side, it's a lot about the logical side as well. So here we see how big they are in inches. Um, here is some other, um, you know, more like features around it or just like details. Um, what type of paper it is, that it has a matte, matte finish the size of it, how many cards there are, you know, and then we have here another lifestyle component. Um, yeah, if we scroll down, we do have something that is called A plus content, which is a visual description. I highly recommend, you could always have a written description, but a um, visual description, it just does the selling a little bit more. And it just can't, it just has to do with how we are wired as humans. Um, if you imagine um, 
like someone having like a really nasty cut on on their skin like you can read about it and you will be like oh yeah not nice but if you see a photo you will immediately have like a reaction right like because when we see a photo um our brain just reacts differently to photo than to text especially because when we are reading text some of us see see the image right so every person thinks a little bit differently right so some people read a text and hear a voice in their in their brain some people just read a text processes and don't have an image in their mind some people see like almost like they can imagine a v like almost like a video as they read reading text so every brain is a little bit different um so we never know how effective just text can be but images can be extremely effective <clears throat> now that's why here again we are using um images but we're also using text we're using a lot more text here as well um and we we work with little text just some little like you know like titles some bullets um real and uncensored we're not expecting people to be reading everything swear your affirmation cards your daily dose of motivation you know having again more lifestyle context images here stay inspired anyway um and that is what um leads to people wanting to buy it and liking to buy it mm. now we've talked about photos i focused a lot on photos and photos are just one of the main important components but of course we also need to have a title we have description these are bullet points and then we have a, another description which is here the visual description that we have so if we're looking at a um, listing and overall and again talking about the principles putting ourselves in our client's shoes we need reviews we need um, a title that describes what the product is um, of course the price makes a difference um, the description not everyone reads it but for those that read it it is important i tend to not really read these type of descriptions i tend to focus a lot i'm very visual so i i am focused more on the images but there are people that read read everything and they want to make a very informed decision so <clears throat> in essence if we really think about everything that i talked about there is a lot of um like common sense in between almost right like we can figure out a lot of the tactical stuff often by putting ourselves into the shoes of others um and here we are putting ourselves in the shoes of two different people of the end user the hypothetical end user the buyer and amazon as an entity as a person <laughs> um, and we always want to know like what's in the interest of those people right like what's in the interest of amazon so that they will show me that i'll be able to get the sales and what's in the interest of my end buyer so that i can present the product in a way that is going to be attractive to them now once we have prepared for a launch and we have the photos we have decided on the text and we thought about um, all the different components that um, make our product stand out we actually can then start preparing for the launch like the true launch and here i want to answer a question that i saw as well about um, getting influencers social media and all of those things i personally um don't use any social media for my brands that means i don't have a facebook i don't have an instagram i don't have um any type of account for for my brands because i I like to think of return on effort. And with that, I mean, like, how much effort does it take me to build up 
maintain and how much will it really give in return and oftentimes when I see like these brand Instagram accounts that have like a hundred followers you had two likes and you're you're trying to post everyday content and the return on effort the return on mental energy time it's often not worth it whatsoever at all unless you're very experienced with social media um, and have an audience and know how to build an audience then yes go for it do social media <laughs> do it if you however are like most people in the world I don't know how to build an Instagram account. Probably if I really put some energy into it, I would. But it would take too long for me to really, like, it, the effort would not be worth it because it is not required. It is not required at all. All of my sales come through Amazon. Well, 99 point something. I have some Etsy as well, but very, very little. But most of my sales are just through Amazon. And I don't depend on any other outside um, marketing in order to succeed on Amazon. Now, next year, as my next goal is to get to $500,000 a month in revenue, I will have to start doing something. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to do five different social media accounts. I'm going to double down on just one. And the only account that I'm going to be focusing on is TikTok and TikTok to what I've been experiencing in the past four years that I've been having a watch on TikTok and I've been seeing what it does for social media brands I've seen what it has done to my own brand um some some client or um like someone who bought one of my products started posting about it and it was a product I didn't really get tons of sales it had like eight to ten sales a day which I mean was fine but it was not like the best seller and from one day to another it got 100 120 sales um, until it like and continuously every single day until it just ran out of stock after five days <laughs> um, and I got to see firsthand again the power of TikTok and if there's anything that you want to invest your time in and you want to do social media, TikTok is the only platform that I would choose because there the return on effort can be tremendous. Um, it can be beyond anything that you can imagine, but it does not always happen fast. Um, I have hired a... Uh, mm, content creator and I'm actively for the next year starting to build content I mean we, we're just at this at I think 15 videos or so so far um, but it's low you get like 400 views here 600 views here 800 views there so it's not going it's not like um, bringing a lot of return on effort just yet but because my goals are bigger for the next year I know that I I'd be investing the effort and the money and the time ahead of time because I've seen how it can go through the roof by going viral. Um, and TikTok is one of the platforms where going viral fast, fast. I mean, still people who go viral have posted hundreds of videos. Like it's not like it's rare that your first video is going to go viral, but the possibility is out there. And I think that what that makes that platform so special. Do you need it? Is it going to overwhelm you to launch with social media, create a TikTok account? Then do not do it. Um, I only start doing it after years of doing it without. And only because I think that at some point I will um, reach the... Um, um, the potential of my current products on Amazon. There's only so many people that search. And on Amazon, because it's a search engine, um, it is a platform where people will only find what they are searching for. In most cases, there is not a lot of like discovery on Amazon um, of products. There's like Amazon depends a little bit on you searching for something. Um, that's why at some point my potential of certain products is capped, 
right? And that's one reason why I am going beyond. But I would, like, if I did launch again today, brand new, I would really think about, is TikTok something I'm willing to invest either quite a bit of time in or not? I would probably do it because I see the benefit of it and I see the benefit of having a TikTok account, but only if that is not going to be something that is diluting my focus too much of the actual launch on Amazon. <clears throat> would you get someone else to do it or do you think it's worth it? Mm, someone else to do it? You you mean social media? Um Instagram, Facebook, and all of that, probably not. I wouldn't. Like, I don't do it. Um, maybe later on, I will do, like, repurposing of Facebook short-term, like, short content videos. Um, why not? We, when we already have the videos and the ones that perform well, why not share them in other platforms? But that's not my main focus. My focus is really um, doubling down on one um, social media platform. Um, without diluting focus. Focus in the end of the day is truly the most important thing that we have. And last year, I learned a very hard lesson for myself where I diluted my focus a bit too much. And I, I made life a lot harder for myself because I had too many things to focus at the same time. And I had a bit of a burnout. And it was really emotionally hard to overcome it um, because I was just trying to do so many different things at the same freaking time. <laughs> um, so, well, what was my train of thought? Sorry, I kind of lost it for a second. Um, social media. Yeah, I would just focus on what gives me the biggest bang all for my buck and takes the doesn't take too much that doesn't dilute my focus too much I wish I had created a lot more of my own products this year but this year I I diluted myself a bit too much that I was not able to focus deeply and then again I'm I have to fully admit and um and be compassionate with myself as well because I can be very strict <laughs> with my expectations on what I, I I perform and I still had a really good performing year so I I, I want to you know like <laughs> take that pressure off my shoulders but um, I find your focus is so important and um, diluting it too much especially for things that don't give you really a return it just wastes life time in a way right like um amazon can do all of those pieces for you because amazon has millions of customers until now it's still one of the biggest platforms in the world um, when it comes to selling products and i'm saying until now because um i think tiktok at some point i, I mean i don't think it can compete but i think tiktok shop is something that's coming up right now we also have some chinese competitors that are coming up but those usually sell like you know like aliexpress like cheap like the cheap cheap <laughs> products um, um but amazon is a giant that it is and it has so many existing customers it has all the infrastructure already and me only focusing on Amazon is all that I need, truly. The only reason why I'm going beyond and only exploring TikTok, nothing else, is because I have these bigger goals um, for next year. Um, would choice of social media platform de demand and target demographic TikTok for Gen Z and Instagram for millennials? Um, not anymore. TikTok is actually filled with millennials. It's filled with Gen X. It's filled with boomers. Um, all different generations are on there now. Um, so 
I don't I don't see it as just a Gen C platform anymore. It used to be probably in 2020, 2021 as well. That's when millennials a lot also started going more on, on it. But these days it's just super diverse. And when it comes to generations, um, when it comes to location, um, interests. And the cool thing about the uh, TikTok algorithm um, is that it just finds your people because people are through the algorithm, they always know what the interest of the people are that are you the user of TikTok. That's one reason why it's so addicting. <laughs> like I have to keep deleting the app because <laughs> it really is addicting. Because TikTok just figures you out so quickly and then it only shows you <laughs> videos that you really resonate with and that you like. Um for us as sellers, this can be very beneficial because it can make finding our people a lot easier um, through the app. Um, and there interest for everything. Like there are channels that are just around cleaning, right? Like you can just watch people clean. <laughs> there are people doing, you know, crazy art. There are people just about, like I get a lot of like puppy related topics because I, I got a puppy this year and it's my very first time I have a dog. I've never had a dog in my life. So I got uh, very, you know, obsessed with the whole dog topic and um, TikTok noticed <laughs> immediately. And I get now the cutest videos <laughs> and uh, dog rescue videos. I, I'm, I tend to like that. Um, but I want to steer back to the business TikTok because I really enjoyed that too. But TikTok, as soon as I changed just a little bit of my interest, it immediately noticed that too. So it is interesting how powerful that algorithm is. And I think that can make it a very strong benefit. Also, something to look into is TikTok shop. It's been around only since September or end of September, like just two, two and a half months right now. So it's it's still in a baby phase. And TikTok shop is a nice thing that you can do on top of Amazon and you can um, connect it. So whenever you get a TikTok sale, it automatically Amazon will fulfill it. So it's all automated. It's pretty easy um, thing um, then to do from your end. There's not like a lot of hassle of having to ship or having to deal with the orders. It can be all automated, which by the way is how I do it with Etsy as well. Um, and in the product launch school, we have one guide on how how you can uh, you know add it but we don't really do top like content around tiktok shop because um i'm definitely not an expert on it there's probably no experts around it really yet because it's very new <laughs> but um yeah um but we share the resources how you could do it <clears throat> I have high expectations for myself as well, and it can be hard to have patience for ourselves. Oh, absolutely, it can be. It can be hard sometimes. I agree, Laura. I was trying to do Facebook, Instagram, and taking courses. Courses. I was overwhelmed. And every platform is different. And then these platforms, especially like Facebook and Instagram, there's like a lot you have to pay to play. Um, I, for example, have a on Facebook, I have a Facebook group with almost 20,000 people in it. Even if I post, the reach is going to be very minimal. It's it's hard to reach your audience um, on Facebook. I think over time, Facebook has made it harder and harder. And there's a lot more dependency on using ads and things like that. And TikTok is just not that oh and one thing i want to add about tiktok i also did, did tiktok ads i've tested that and those performed pretty well too so that was a very interesting thing so for me it was pretty sure like yeah tiktok is an amazing platform i see i'm a gen x and love tiktok yeah i think tiktok all our generations we are liking it um so it's not a place anymore for just gen c yeah and um, and because it understands uh, like TikTok's algorithm can be so good, like you don't necessarily get the Gen Z um, content because it will just give you your own content. So you won't even notice. 
um, if you're in a different generation in most cases. Sometimes you'll get some random videos, but then they are fun videos and you're still interested in it. So, yeah. I didn't know you could do Amazon in the TikTok shop. I thought you had to have a physical product to post out to customers. No, you don't have to. Um, you can have it all connected through um, Amazon. And you can do exactly the same on Etsy. Um, I do, I sell on Etsy as well, but I mean, I say I sell on Etsy. I have a few sales every month, nothing like major. Um, and here again, I choose not to dive in too deep into Etsy. I could possibly, but I think the return on effort is not going to be worth the time. I rather, if I have limited time to invest into something or I want to lim limit my time that I am investing into learning something new, it would be TikTok because the return on, on effort is a lot higher there than it is on Etsy. Etsy is great. I mean, I, I don't want to deny that Etsy isn't great. But I think um, if I did focus on Etsy, probably less on the physical product side, I would I would maybe do more like digital to fund projects. Um, I think if I did start from the beginning, that would be something I would consider. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> would you recommend selling on Amazon and Shopify or only at a later date maybe? When you're just launching, I don't think you need a website. I only started having a proper website this year. <laughs> um, I didn't like, that's not true. I've, I've had uh, for a different brand, I had a website right away. But look, that website, if you don't get traffic on it, it does cricket, like nothing. Like I can sell on Amazon tens of thousands of pieces while on Shopify, I have zero <laughs> orders because that's the tricky part about having your own online store. You always need to get traffic on it. And how do you get traffic? Either you have an audience or you send um, paid traffic or you're really good with SEO, like Google search engine optimization, or you work with influence. Like that's why working with your own online store and having an on online store is a lot harder, I find, than having it on Amazon. Because on Amazon, a lot of these things are already built in and the most important traffic is built in because traffic is the hardest part in this type of business like creating a beautiful looking website is the absolute easiest because you know they're like templates you just need to use photography and so on but getting the people to visit your store um, that can be hard especially if you don't have an audience yet and um Testing it out can be hard. The first time I tested Shopify was before I knew about Amazon. 2013, I was selling like handmade little things. I was at least trying to, let's say it this way. And I spent some money on Google Ads and I was really shocked. <laughs> it, like I was not up, like I had no clue what I was doing um, clearly, but still, it was so expensive. Out of 100 people visiting the store, and it looked really nice, I had one sale. And I was surprised. I I don't know. I had no clue how what a normal standard would be. Like, what what's the percentage of people that will, you know, buy your product? And on your own online store, it can be like, the conversion rate can be like 1%, 2%, right? Like, out of 100 people, one or two will buy. On Amazon, um, it can be higher, which is the beautiful thing. It's 5 to 10%, sometimes even higher, um, because there's a lot more added trust and people don't have to put their credit card in there. They don't need to like think about, like, is this a legit store or not? They just go to the checkout page and that's it. And that's why the conversion rate on Amazon is a lot higher as well than it would be on a store. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so it's not needed for for a launch and I would always do a lean launch and with a lean launch is only do what really is going to have an effect and anything else don't do it it's not needed you can always have a nice website later on if you want to but in order to get launched absolutely not needed 
Um, I have a TikTok shop, but nothing in it, Lord. I, I wanted to put my KDP stuff in it, but I it won't let me. Mm, yeah, with KDP, you cannot connect it. So in order to sell your KDP journals, you would have to ha have them printed um, and then ship them manually, or you have to work with like a fulfillment service. Um, or you, yeah, that's unfortunately what it is. <clears throat> well, I mean, one thing that I'm thinking of right now, you could in theory send it to Amazon and then have Amazon ship it, but you would have to always buy in bulk ahead of time. Um, there are other um, print-on-demand services um, I'm pretty sure that you could connect it with to your TikTok shop. Um, yeah. People can't search for things they don't know is there, so advertising is huge for that. Yes, absolutely. Investment of effort with a Shopify is so low. Like, yeah, the return on effort with a Shopify can be low unless you make it your main focus. And because we cannot make all the things our main focus at the same time, it's just impossible. Um, and again, that's where the diluted focus comes in. And sometimes our business ideas don't work out, not because the idea is not good, not because the product is not good, but because our focus is diluted to, on too many things. And it makes it a lot harder to succeed because um, you're dabbling a lot in different things. Um, and I would only want to spend my time if I really can get something back because I spent too many years of my life chasing um, the next what is the what is the name um of it like shiny object syndrome like the next quick thing and this thing or oh, and this is going to be the solution and let me try this that's why i had a shopify store selling some stuff and i that's why i had this and that and this and because i i try to do all these different things <laughs> at the same time and it's very hard <laughs> um so it, it was a bit of a lesson that focus when it's diluted, it brings you not the best results. Yeah. Um, and doubling down only on Amazon and not diversifying. Um, a lot of people will say like, wow, you have to dis diversify. Yeah, you can diversify, but diversify once you're successful. Because if you start diversifying from the get-go, it's hard to become successful because you won't be able to put and learn all of the things and it's overwhelming and then it's also not fun anymore motivation goes down because oftentimes when it comes to business especially when I reflect on myself is it's not that the how-to is missing it's also the psychological components of being a human like motivation wanting to do the thing procrastination accountability that, that all plays a massive role in becoming successful not only the tactical stuff and the harder we make it for ourselves to stay motivated and keep going, the harder it is also to become successful with things. Um, that's why I have such a deep belief in doing it as a group. I have a deep belief in setting yourself with accountability, co-working sessions. Like, I freaking live for co-working sessions. Um, there is a service that I use. It's called um, Focusmate. Um, you can sign up for it for free. I, I found out about it a few years ago, and it's just like phenomenal. You basically are on a Zoom call or like a video call with a stranger, and you're both on mute, and you're both just working. And it's like the library effect. When I go to a library or to a cafe shop, <laughs> I can work very well because there are other people around. And then I would feel very self-conscious if I would just like be scrolling on TikTok for an hour and watch some <laughs> puppies. <laughs> um, but if I'm alone at home, it can happen that, like, it happens to us all, right? Like, motivation slips. 
I procrastinate. I end up wasting time on Facebook comments. But I don't know, you know, like I'd be reading or looking at memes and then I'm noticing like, well, what, what, wait, what am I doing here? And these co-working sessions make it a lot um, easier. So a successful launch is not only the tactical, like, yes, you want to have beautiful photos. Yes, you want to have um, the videos. You want to have a nice title. You want to set everything up for success. But the one of the biggest components is also you want to streamline. You want it to be lean. You don't want things to be overly complicated. We easily get, like, most people get easily overwhelmed um we easily procrastinate we easily and everyone is like that um i used to for a very long time believe like there must be something wrong with me you know like why can i get stuff done like why is it so hard to be successful and do the freaking thing <laughs> like i know what to do but why am i not doing it and um after spending time on personal development over the years, I figured out, wow, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just that I'm human and I need to <laughs> help myself out. I need to help that part of my brain that is, you know, out of like a past time where the, you know, the goal wasn't to be successful, right? Like the goal was to succeed, not succeed, uh, to survive. That's what I mean. Um, and that's why our brain is not always wired to be very productive. <laughs> um, and we're all just human and we all experience these different things. And we want to make things streamlined for us, lean. That's why I recommend no social media, no offside things. Always check what is my return on effort. Like return on effort is a thing to always look at. <laughs> and I had to learn that this this year the really hard way again like I spread myself really thin especially at the beginning of the year and then during the summer and then I had to move I moved house and like I was I was like thin 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 spread <laughs> and it, it really I crashed like I had a bit of a burnout crash um and then I'm, I got back to like okay you know what return on effort do things that give you an awesome return without making your life crazy or difficult or hard or, you know, not fun. <laughs> the end of the day, that's why we're working, right? We're not, uh, we're wanting to have fun and passion and do all the cool things. And next year, I plan to travel a lot with my kitties uh, and husband and, um, not allow myself to go <laughs> and spread myself um, that thin again. Um, okay, now I want to do a quick recap of what is important for the launch. You will have me heard, like you hear me talk a lot about principles. I keep talking, I keep saying the word principles as well because principles uh, are more important than tactics, always. Um, because they can always guide you. If you understand the principle, you will easily figure out the tactics because then they are common sense in many ways and can be researched then too, right? Um, because in the end of the day, if what we learn from how to launch, let's see if I can move this a little bit better. Um, so if we can learn how to launch well, we want to always look for the win-win and the win-win we need to look through the perspective of Amazon what does Amazon want ultimately what does my customer want ultimately customer ah. Cus cu no ah when I when I have to write sometimes I'm like how 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 was it spelled again <laughs> Okay, we understand what it says, right? Amazon, we want to see the perspective of Amazon. They want to have good reputation. They want to have sales. They also want to be making the money. They have to pay the employees. They have to do a lot of these things. So they don't want to show products that they will not be selling. 
So you want to have a good product ahead of time. You want to show your product in a way that your customer can have an emotional connection to it and a logical connection. So emotion and logic is always important. Emotion. <clears throat> Then you don't want to be doing all the things. Keep it lean. Really, keep it lean. Focus on Amazon. Become successful. Diversify afterwards. Only exception if you have the energy and the time TikTok. That's the only exception that I will, will make. Just because I believe that TikTok right now is a little bit off in a gold rush time. In a gold rush time... Um, every platform's experienced that. Amazon had a gold rush time between 2014, 2014 and 2016. That was a gold rush time that when so many people became extremely successful on Amazon because it was not very competitive at that time. Um, and the entry of like the bar barriers of entry were very low. Amazon didn't have a lot of rules back then. Same thing is happening with TikTok. Not a lot of competition yet. L not very high rules. Like it's pretty like the Wild West still. So that's the only thing. Other than that, keep it lean. You don't need a website. You don't need any fancy schmancy things. You don't need um, social media accounts. None of this is important. Um, you can send some of your products to influencers. That's something that you can do. Um, also not necessarily required. Um, I have sent some of my products to influencers, but very minimal. Um, I really focus on return on, um, return on effort, R-O-E, <laughs> return on effort, um, because, you know, you might have to write a hundred influences to get the reply of five. And maybe then they agree. And it is a thing on its own, right? Um, figuring out which script works, what doesn't work, and so on. So it does also require quite a bit of um, getting used to it also. On. It can be an uh, extra but it's not required. And the beauty is Amazon can offer us all that we need. Um, and that's why the product launch school focuses on Amazon um, because it has the, the whole built-in thing. Um, we have the people. I'm going to put here an I. That means like all the different people that can look at our product. And I'm going to put here a truck because they can do all the shipping and it's all in one place and they do the customer service for you. So what? Uh, how do we put the customer service? Maybe a smile is the customer service. Everything is being taken care of by Amazon. You don't have to do any of these things. Um, and that's very um, powerful because each of these things on their own, if you have to figure them out on your own, if you have to hire people. Like this month, um, I'm not sure. I think I had 5,000 plus sales. I would have to double check. I, I'm actually not quite sure. But roughly that. Imagine the customer service. <laughs> Imagine who I would have to hire. Imagine what I would have to do if I had to ship out every single order. I wouldn't be here with you. Like I, I wouldn't have time to do these things. Um, I would be only focused on my own business, and I would, I think I would be pretty miserable. I wouldn't like <laughs> have to ship all of that stuff. Of course, there are other fulfillment services, but you know that's also you know you have to find them. You have to pay extra and here and there. So this is all in one place and at very affordable rates. If you had to ship it on your own. It would cost you a lot more if you had to find the customers yourself. It would cost you a lot more than than the commission that they take. Um, and it would especially cost you a lot more work. Yesterday, when I had the $18,000 sales in one day on Amazon, um, I, I didn't do anything. 
on that day to get those sales. I didn't have to, I, I, I didn't send any emails out. I didn't do web. I don't even have an email list for that brand. <laughs> like I don't ever send emails to, um, to get those sales. Of course, if I want to grow later on having an email list, um, doing all the socials and, you know, influencers, collaborating, paying influencers, all of that can be super powerful in order to grow further. But I, I got to over $150,000 this uh, month in sales without any of it. It's all through here. And that's what um, I love. Um, how much percentage does Amazon take as a cut? 15%. They take, it uh, depends on the product that you're selling, uh, however, 15%. <clears throat> I calculate my margins in a way that no matter the Amazon fees, I, uh, I have a good return on investment. Um, and the 15% is well worth the, the many sales that they get me. <laughs> um, so especially um, in days where there's a lot of sales. Um, I don't even know how would I how I would have done it. Like, um, Im like imagine getting like a thousand or like 500 sales in one day. Um, like, how would I even do that? Like, I would have literally no clue how I would do it. <laughs> like, you know, I would have to have like a massive email. I like... I, I would need so many other components that would require me to have a massive team of people in order to do it. And I don't. Um, I do have a team of people, but mostly because of my coaching businesses, mostly because I've done done for you services, one-on-one -on -one services. Um, then I have like these courses. That's where most of my team goes. For my Amazon business, I it's me. It's, um, I have a personal assistant that does maybe a few hours a week and um, just communicating for new products with the manufacturer. And I have one person that looks a little bit over the ads. That's it. <laughs> I have very few expenses, uh, monthly expenses. Uh, my coaching business, very different story because there I need a lot more people to support, to be, you know, for, to be around customers. So it's a very different thing, um, which makes this also very attractive because um, very low expenses and very high level of automation um, and me not having to, to be around in order for it to work. <clears throat> okay, now let me know. Do you have any questions when it comes to the launch and growth of your business? <clears throat> mm, I also want to answer some questions about the product launch school because I know so many have asked questions and many of you want to join and you're still not quite sure what is all included in it. And there have also been a few confusions about my journey. So I want to clarify a little bit about my journey. <clears throat> so the first time I've ever heard about Amazon and I've um, kind of learned about it was 2014. I met a guy. Um, I was in Bali at that time. I was, I was having a little bit of a you know, quarter life crisis. I was 24 um, that time. And I was a single mother by, uh, at that time. And um, I, I was living um, from doing like odd jobs here and there. I was helping with seminars and some things. And living in Bali was just super cheap um, for anyone who has been very low cost. Everywhere, in most places in Asia, very low cost. And it, it was just a, a great place for me to be. And I was having a little bit of a like quarter life crisis because I was not sure what I want to do with my life. And I met this guy um, and he looked like the biggest hippie. He didn't seem like, he didn't really seem like he had his life together. Um, we met, um, we, we were a group of people eating some dinner together. And then later on, people were telling me, do you know that he actually has a, a million dollar business? 
um selling on amazon and i was like what <laughs> what what did you say like he has what and they were like yeah no no like really um he makes roughly 20000 us dollars uh, a month um in personal income and he sells yoga mats on amazon and that was the first moment when i heard about this i'm like Hold on. So he lives in Bali. He sells in the US. Like, how does this work? So the products then go from from the manufacturer. Then, to, like, I wanted to understand it, and it was the first moment. It was also like sometimes we have these moments in life, right? Like we meet someone, and just talking to them totally transforms our lives, and then we are in front of a fork, and then we suddenly take a different turn in life. So this was that time where I took that turn but at that time there was not a lot of information out the courses were like five thousand dollars plus it was just really difficult i didn't really know what to do about it i didn't really have money there were like a lot of different things that played into this where i it took me quite a bit of time but by the end of 2015 um, i didn't really know yet very well how to sell products or anything like that but that's when i started communicating with manufacturers and I started with like really random products. I started with like weight loss tea, um, you know, for um, um, the vaping. Like the, I was just looking for things that were trendy. Uh, and I passion product was not even something I could like think of. And also I was like learning from people online. And a lot of them were saying like, only sell products you're not passionate about like you will get overly attached and you won't be able to make the right decisions yada 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 all that stuff that i used to believe um, until a few years as well but i figured out that that's not true 2016 i launched my uh one of my first brands that did well and i actually did well for some time i was able to live from amazon um, until 2017, I was doing well. I actually moved to Los Angeles. So I had a time where things were pretty cool. But I fell flat on my face because I was selling a product I was not passionate about. It was an electronic product. It was like a straightening hairbrush. I was not passionate about it. Other people were clearly in my... Um, you know, my competitors, they were clearly passionate about it. They were doing their thing. I just didn't understand the technicality. Like It was just not my thing. And at some point, competitors overtook me. It was just, it kind of broke. And I was trying to get the sales up and I was trying to do the things, but I was not able to compete. My product was just not good enough uh, in comparison to the other ones. Um, so I wasn't able to do it. So 2017, I'm like, awesome. <laughs> I moved back to Germany, move in with my dad um, and my son, of course. So I'm like, okay, I'm starting from scratch. This is really a not nice situation. I start working for Amazon. Um, I went to a library and I was just with my laptop and I, there was an ad for Amazon. They were looking for seller support. And I'm like, wow, cool. That's the thing I'm going to do. I want to learn from the source. I'm not going to give up on Amazon. I saw the success. I know it works. I just need to figure out better products to do it. So I ended up working for Amazon. I worked with, um, for them for, I quit in 2021. <clears throat> Officially, I quit 20. No, I think 2020, I quit. Round about that. Uh, don't, you know, don't be too exact with it. <laughs> I don't recall fully. But I used to work for Amazon. And I was very obsessed about the whole topic. And then I was um, pretty quickly um, promoted to support the top 100 sellers. And at some point, top um, 50. And in Europe not worldwide in Europe. Um, and that was so inspiring. I got to learn a lot. I worked with the different teams. That's where um, I really started making a lot of these like understandings. Like, wow, this is how it works. This is how you, you grow, how you launch, how you do this and that. And that's also when I started doing consulting work on the side <clears throat> and helped a lot of different brands launch 
but I was still struggling finding like the right product for myself. Like I knew I was going to do it, but at that time I was paying, I was living pay, paycheck to paycheck. I had just gotten pregnant again. I got married. Um, my husband, he, when we met, he was 26, so I was 27. So we were still pretty, pretty young. He was just finishing his study. So we didn't really have money much. Um, we had a new baby on the way at some point and I was really going paycheck to paycheck. I was doing something on the side, but you know how life was, it was just barely enough. Um, and then in 2019, I decided, you know what, I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to um, start um, working on it again. Um, and at that time, I didn't have the savings for it. So I had to become really resourceful. And that's one of the things that I wanted to, to, to tell you, because some of you are going to say, I wish I could do it, but I don't have the money right now. And sometimes we need to get started before we are ready and the right way will show it. I was negotiating with manufacturers. I didn't have the money just yet. And then I had to really think like, okay, I need to be resourceful. And I started making a list. I think I told the story before. I made a list in brainstormed ways, like how can I do this? I knew I had to think outside of the box. So I put all sorts of things, selling stuff, from around the home, um, offer my service on Fiverr, um, dog walking. Um, I don't know what else was on the list, but quite a few different things. I ended up doing two things out of that list. One, going around and selling things that I had in the house um, that I didn't need. And I didn't. it didn't even cross my mind that it would be worth much. I ended up selling quite a few things that I think it got me to around 3000 euros roughly so three thousand dollars just you know um roughly and i was very surprised and it was the first time i was like oh wow you know sometimes the solutions are actually not that far away it's just like out of it was out of my awareness but it actually was within my space the whole time i just didn't never think of it like i never thought of like just selling the stuff um I also offered my service on Fiverr. So I was doing um, account, Amazon account restorations. And like I just brainstormed a few different things that I could offer that I have a bit of an experience with. And then also in a matter of just a few weeks, I was able to get a few more thousand in. And then I had way more, not way more, and I had enough to, to get started um, again. So sometimes, and... I will never forget these life lessons. And I'm, it's strange to say, but I'm grateful for the struggles that I had because without those struggles, I would have not learned to become resourceful because being resourceful as a business owner is really something that is needed. You always need to come up with some sort of like creative solution if things are not um, working out. Um, and in the end of the day, it always uh, there's always going to be a moment where something happens um there's delays or there's like some i don't know what like i can't think of things right now but you know there's always in life there's always something uh, happening sometimes minor things but sometimes it's also you know being resourceful and finding solutions and this really taught me like the whole struggle here was so beneficial but still, I wish <laughs> there would have been something like the product launch school at this time. So I would have not like have to learn everything firsthand. I, I prefer to learn <laughs> from someone else telling me what to not to do rather <laughs> than having to do the things and losing the money and doing all of that myself. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing one-on-one -on -one work since 2017 so i've worked with a lot of different brands and since 2019 i've been building my own brands um and some of uh, the most recent brand that you have not the most recent brand is currently being launched and the brand that i keep showing you is um from 2021 that's when i launched that particular brand 
um, that I, I keep showing you the account. And I have a new brand um, launching quart first quarter in, uh, yeah, next year. It was supposed to already been launched, but as I told you, had a bit of a burnout situation there. Um, but regardless, I'm I'm really happy that it's launching um, in the first quarter of 2024. Um, yeah, and that's the whole story. Now, in 2020, I found out about KDP, and um, so initially, I funded my ideas through just being resourceful. And then in 2020, when I learned that there's KDP, my brain just exploded. I'm like, like, how can I have been in this Amazon space for so long? I used to work for Amazon even, and I didn't even know about this. Like, I felt a little bit silly that I didn't know that this exists. So KDP, uh, or that you can do this. I knew that KDP exists, but I didn't know that you could do journals. Like, it didn't cross my mind. So then in 2020, I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I, anyway, like I'm very passionate about journalists and planners. So now why don't I do KDP? And then that's the best way to fund all these different ideas. And that's what I did then. So I doubled down on print on demand. And I keep talking about return on effort, right? Like for me, it was like, this is so lean. This is so nice because... KDP is on the same platform as also on Amazon. I can um, do print on demand on products that I anyway want to like to sell. So it's like a total win, 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 win situation. So I went into KDP, um, started selling like different types of journals from manifestation, ADHD, like a lot of other topics as well. Um, and... I got a lot of the funds through it. Um, I've made over 100,000 um, USD on KDP in royalties. So this over time has, of course, had a massive effect, not only on my business. I didn't invest everything into my business. I also kept a lot for myself. I bought myself my first dream car, um, which is a Range Rover. Um, I bought, I, I still made a good deal. Like I bought it uh, secondhand, but it's so pretty. And I, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still happy about this car, even though, like, what me, like, even though, like I've had it, I've had it now for a little bit, but I love it so much. So KDP has also like funded my personal life quite a bit. And I let my physical product just grow. I don't take money personally out of my physical product. I use KDP to fund and I also use KDP to fund fund my own lifestyle. I like the computer, I bought it with it. I invest, I put um, into like investment funds. Like that's what I use KDP for. Um, and yeah, and then today, 20. 23, I have made 1.6 million on Amazon. Well, that's probably already wrong, but 0.677 seven ish, maybe a little bit more, but that's what um, I mean. So you see, struggling, 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 and then suddenly it seems like overnight, but it all kind of played into it, and they're all important lessons were in here. Um, success, I don't believe it happens overnight, but the compounding effect can feel like it happens overnight. But the cool thing is you don't necessarily have to go through all of these lessons on your own. You can learn through, um, through other people. Like in this case, you can learn through me. You don't have to make the mistake of creating a an electric product that you don't know you need all sorts of compliance stuff. <laughs> like I had to make a lot of like really uncomfortable <laughs> um, lessons um, that you can all learn um, through me. So I'm hoping that I can pick you up from this stage. So then you can, you know, you can either invest 
directly if you have um, the investment capital, you know, some of you want to just directly invest and that totally works. Well, uh, let me see if I can move this a little bit more like that. Ah, yeah, look, much better. Um, <clears throat> But even if you don't, you know, KDP can help you as well. Um, and if it's not KDP, becoming resourceful can help you as well. Thinking outside of the box, like what is maybe not out like in your awareness, but it's definitely out in the possibility. If there's someone else that was able to do it, there is a way that you can also do it. <clears throat> Sometimes it requires a little bit of brainstorming. But I find this KDP path in particular very nice. Also, other print-on-demand paths can be really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> how profitable can KDP actually be? Um, the 100K is royalties. So that's my profit. That's not revenue. I don't know my um, KDP revenue because I never look at revenue because in the KDP account... You never get to see revenue. You only get to see royalties. Um, so, yeah, it is very powerful. I, you know, I, I, um, yeah. How many KDP products did you create to reach 100k profit? I don't know the exact amount, but it's less than 50. No, yeah. <clears throat> less than 50. Um, and some of these 50, some of them have sold nothing, right? Like <laughs> some have sold absolutely zero um, because sometimes I don't know why, but um, they didn't sell well. But that's the cool thing with KDP. Maybe the cover was not nice. Like I've done a lot of the covers myself. And initially I was, you know, it, it takes a bit of experience to also do things well with Canva. You know, over time, things get better and easier. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's answer any questions that you have about product loan school. I want to give you this background because I want to really transparently show you what my path was and where I would like to pick you up. Um, where, like, this is the stage of my journey that I would like to pick you up. Um, the stage where I started with my first products, when I started getting successful, where I was using KDP in order to fund my projects um, and was able to then build from there. I have created over the past years um, a few different projects or memberships that help exactly with this. So I have a KDP club. So it's a membership teaches you how to do KDP in particular. I have Journals and Planners Pro. We call it JPP internally in my team. Um, and that's where you learn how to create journals and planners, the whole creation, the content creation, or other printed products as well. That's what you've learned. And now the product loan school, um, the product P T P loan school, TPLS <clears throat> is a product loan school. And if you look at this, it all is connected, <laughs> right? Like KDP, I needed that in order to fund uh, it well. Um, and also to fund myself, to have a bit of fun <laughs> in life too. While I do this, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't just want to, you know, <laughs> um, Journals and Planners Pro to actually learn how to do this in one of the most lucrative niches out there, uh, most lucrative product categories that exist is um, Journals and Planners. Beautiful return on investment. You can connect it with so many different types of passions because there's a journal and planner for literally anything. Um, any type of interest, any type of religion, any type of belief, hobbies. Um, <clears throat> so this is how to create powerful products and the product launch school is how to launch them on Amazon. So it kind of brings all of these components. Sorry, I keep moving this, but I'm like trying to figure out how to just do this. Um, bringing all of these components together. And these were sort of like the puzzle pieces 
that I needed in order to to get to where I am now. Um, and <clears throat> I'm a bit late. Do you do one-on-one? Um, no, I don't do any one-on-one anymore because next year I don't want to spread myself too thin anymore. I want to spend a lot of time with my kids. I want to travel a lot. And group coaching is the best um, of everything. And I think that group coaching sometimes can even be much more powerful actually than one-on-one because you have you get to experience through the group you have um through someone else being coached through something you get to learn so much more each of these have coaching sessions so i'm live here twice a month um to do coaching sessions with kdp um here i'm live once a week and I do coaching sessions, I also do classes and things like that. Um, anything that has to do with journals and planners. With the product loan school, I am doing group coaching three times a month. In one week, we will have a implementation week. Um, and this is because I want you to uh, also get it done. And I know how powerful accountability is. And accountability on its own is worth everything because what is a product idea worth if it's only in our mind? Um, we need to get it done. And sometimes to get it done, we need support. We, you know, we need the motivation. We need the accountability. We need to like do it together. And let's just freaking do it. <laughs> um, and yeah, so the all pass and Emma and I, we were brainstorming and um, this is a special pass that we have for this class. Um, and the all pass, let me just, I have yesterday created a paper, which I think will show it a little bit better. <clears throat> so the all pass basically gives you access to every um, community that I have. You learn about KDP, you learn about Journals and Planners Pro, you also get the Product Loan School and you get it for a lifetime. So usually you can join just the Product Loan School, which is basically what we've talked about in the past few days, um, just launching a product on Amazon. And I'm just saying just launching a product on Amazon because that's already powerful on its own. And it's about launching a passion product on Amazon, you get the full course, community, co-working sessions, coaching calls with me, coaching calls with Ivan, which is one of the ads experts that I work with, and he's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> and you also get, which is probably one of the most valuable parts of all of this, my personal contacts to my manufacturers, to my sourcing agents. You get um, templates to the contracts that I use to protect my myself from having manufacturers like copy um, copy what I do. You get um, templates, all sorts of templates that I have. And if you've seen the type of goodies that we send, like the product loan school has a ton of of that stuff. Like for all for each step you will get a template support anything that you need um, or guide <clears throat> just just the product loan school for 12 months is 777 which by itself is absolute craziness the last time i've done group coaching was five thousand dollars and i have uh yeah i've never done amazon coaching for 12 months <laughs> for 777 dollars and why I'm doing this is because I'm deeply inspired by an online friend, um, Evelyn Wise. Some of you might know her. Um, we've known each other for now almost four years. And um, she has inspired me to offer high ticket courses for lower ticket prices to make it more accessible. And I fully see that because if I think back of 2014 me, $5,000 course group coaching would have been what I needed, but not something that I could have considered. $777, 
I would have figured it out. Like, I would have done something to figure out how to do this. Like, because I would have known how much of a difference this can make and how 777, like, the return on that can be a hundred times, if not more, um, over time. So, and I love this approach and I love Evelyn for doing this and for inspiring me to do something like this as well into offering something that I would I would have never considered offering like like if someone would have told me offered for 700 and I would be like almost like hey you know I value my content a little bit more than that but now I'm seeing it from a very different perspective from like hey I want to make it ex um, accessible and because I want to make it accessible I am going to offer it for that and I'll be able to offer it to more people and um, help more people with that and I think that is something I I really um, like and then <clears throat> the all access lifetime pass um, basically the 999 sorry gives you access to all of everything that I have um, and with that, you get to learn all the different components from the KDP, basically print on demand, to diving really deep into journals and planners. And um, yeah, <clears throat> Julie is asking a question. If you are under journals and planners pro $97 a month, would you get access to the product launch school or is this on top? <clears throat> so the... In the Journals and Planners Pro, the Product Learn School was a bonus for the paid and full 777. Um, for those that are paid monthly, <clears throat> um, I would recommend getting the 777 option. But when you check out, we have now figured out a way that you could actually pay it monthly still, um, breaking it down. I feel like you're give, giving us a gift. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is um, very, very sweet. And <clears throat> sometimes when I, when I think of the journey, and I think back of, I reflect on life and think what, you know, um, what important times and folks in my life they have been for example the person I've met in 2014 I don't recall his name I probably if I saw him I wouldn't even recognize him anymore he was a person I only had dinner with and um with this group of people once and I never expected that that moment would shift my life in such a tremendous way um I don't know if I would have ever thought about Amazon without it. So sometimes these moments can have a very profound effect. Um, and if I in any way would be able to pass that onwards to someone else, I I, I mean, I, I think that's um, a special thing to do um, because the positive effect that building a business like this has had on me like I know I'm not made for being an employee because I struggle being an employee my ADHD is just like oh it's I suffer a lot so I I knew I had to create my own business <clears throat> I just never knew how and this is something that over the time has um you know developed itself into that what it is now <clears throat> we don't meet people by chance I believe I came across your story in gift for reason and that would be really nice yeah I I would like that <laughs> if we if you do all in can you start with KDP and still get help all the way through the product law school yes absolutely the product law school is not limited to 12 months I want to be very clear about this the this path is limited like i'm um, getting this ticket for 777 is limited to 12 months um 
I'm not limiting the whole product loan school to 12 months. I'm, I think I will probably do it longer, <laughs> probably do it for the next few years. Uh, I don't know how long I will do it. Uh, maybe I'll do it five years. Maybe I, who knows how long I will do it. Maybe I'll do it two years. Life will show. Um, <clears throat> but I can imagine myself doing this for longer. So <clears throat> getting the all the lifetime pass like even if you start with kdp let's say six months you just focus on kdp well then you can afterwards focus 12 months on the product launch school oh however however time you want to spend on it um it is not limited i'll be like kdp i've been doing the kdp club now i think it's my third year doing it um and i will just continue doing it uh, as long as it resonates with what I do and I feel like I like what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I, would I would join up for everything that Laura offers if I had unlimited funds. <laughs> um, um, Okay, um, are there any questions to me? I have to go now, but I appreciate you so much. I hate, I hate that I have to go. Thank you. That's, that's okay. We will also all soon go. Thank you so much for joining um, and um, being here. Um, and no monthly fee after 999. No, there's no monthly fee from my end. You get access to all of my memberships. And there's some memberships I actually didn't mention to you today. I have like, uh, I have thousands and thousands of templates too that you can use from coloring books to journal, um, um, journal pages, planner pages. Oh, and another membership I also forgot to mention <laughs> is that I, every month I do research um, and I search for journals, planners, coloring books, workbooks, activity books, um, like a few different types of journals and planners that are within what we do. And I do the research on Amazon to see what is um, being searched for and what has demand right now. Because as we talked about in the first day, Knowing the demand for something that we want to sell is crucial in order to see if there's a market for what we want to sell. So every month I do this um, for you too. Um, so that you get to see what people are searching for on Amazon. Laura, when does the school start? Um, if you sign up, um, <clears throat> you will see that all the classes will activate. So it's not drip content. All the, the full course is already there. We just wanted to make sure that we only activate it once the three days are over. We wanted anyone who joins still focus just on the three days and the Q&A tomorrow. And then afterwards, you will see everything pops up <laughs> and is available. And you will be, um, yeah, you can, you can select whatever class you want to take, the whole school with all the modules and everything is available within it. Um, do we need Canva on iPad? I have my laptop. You don't necessarily need Canva. I find Canva can be helpful, especially with KDP. Um, you don't need an iPad. I don't have an iPad. Mm -hmm. And you also don't need to have like skills in being like really good in designing or anything like that. <clears throat> How long is the enrollment open for? The enrollment is open until the 29th. However, if you want to meet tomorrow my manufacturer, because tomorrow we have a call with him, um, and you want to uh, be able to pre-submit questions to him that he can then answer, or you want to get to know him, um, then you would want to join the all-access pass um, today because tomorrow is the call. So, um, and that's the last call before Christmas. <clears throat> and during the Christmas time, my kids are home. So I, I want to make sure I am with them. The first coaching call is going to be then in January. And also during the time where it is open, which is open until 29th, 
we are going to have the Facebook group is there, but we're only going to let everyone into the Facebook group on January 4th to have everyone um, in together. <clears throat> so this is just like a little bit of an organizational side from our end. Um, and you have until the 29th to join, but of course to join to tomorrow's call, I definitely would recommend you to join ahead of time so that you don't miss out on the call with one of um, my dearest uh, manufacturers <clears throat> that I've been working with since 2021. <clears throat> so, and finding a good manufacturer, that's on its own quite a bit. Uh, which membership is the one that costs $18 for the first month? I'm actually not quite sure which membership you're talking about. I don't have any membership that costs 18. I once had an offer a few years ago for the KDP club. Um, and the KDP club basically is included in the all lifetime, all access pass. <clears throat> Everything is included in there. Um, and the KDP club is, um, yeah, you have full full course as well. Um, everything is um, available. <clears throat> you also have access to previous challenges that we've made. Like we had like the first thousand dollar challenge. A few, like we've done a lot of really cool stuff there too. And you have access to all sorts of um, templates here again. Ah, and we have, oh, I totally forgot to mention that. And the KDP club, we have design calls with a, a Canva designer. Um, she is phenomenal um, and she can help you with all of your um, Canva designs. We also have um, in um, Journalism and Planners Pro, we have content classes, we have guests speaking um, or guests um, speaking on uh, trademarks, TikTok. Oh, we have a TikTok challenge happening in January for KDP as well because on KDP you can oh you can do so well like I I'll show you a few examples of people that have just put made very simple videos of their print on demand um you know authors copies and they have gone through the freaking roof with KDP um so we are going to do a little bit of TikTok there as well and for that I have already um, hired a TikTok expert and she is going to guide us all through and I'm going to do the challenge together with you because I also want to get myself on TikTok <laughs> so yeah um, we do quite a lot of things um, the, the goal is to have us all succeed and also succeed together I, I thrive myself through the accountability of these groups because I'm holding myself accountable a lot. So I, you know, I I, I kind of got to do it now then <laughs> that I'm exposing myself. <laughs> so I find that helps a lot. And it helps everyone else to do it together, have an accountability partner and so on. <laughs> Manufacture isn't included with the um, the product on school full payment. Yes, it is also included. Sorry, I, I didn't um, say that correctly. If you pay in full the product loan school 777 or the all lifetime all time lifetime access and for both you are um, able to meet the manufacturer tomorrow <clears throat> if i need kdp to fund my first product launch is it possible to raise enough funds for the first product launch via kdp in six months um yes it is possible um <clears throat> i think um i think one thing that i would focus more next year and i'm doing that with my own kdp as well um is actually through through tiktok i've seen crazy stuff with kdp in combination with tiktok um just on amazon alone you can also do well like um like i don't want to say that you know amazon, amazon on its own is already powerful um, but yeah, how much is the KDP club? The KDP club is usually $49 a month. <clears throat> For those who are new and joined all access, where would you recommend to start so we don't get overwhelmed? Um, 
very good idea. Um, I actually am going to do um, sort of like a bonus training here um, and I'm going to draft a bit of a roadmap, different possibilities. If you're joining the all access path and you want to, you know, start with KDP, what should you do? Um, what do you not need to look at um, just yet? You know, so you can plan yourself, you know, what needs to be done without getting overwhelmed because really getting overwhelmed, um, we don't want that. And I don't want you to ever get overwhelmed with all my, my, um, you know, the courses and everything. So yesterday someone suggested that and I thought it was such a good idea to create some sort of a roadmap. So um, I'll, I'm not sure if I can finish it tomorrow, but maybe day after tomorrow. I'm definitely going to do it before Friday because on Friday I'm I'm going to be traveling to Heidelberg, a different city here in Germany, um, and um, meeting my husband and my younger son there. I'm here in Munich with my older son right now because he still has school and school only finishes on Friday. And then we're all going to be with my mother-in-law and she's lovely. <laughs> um, so I'm actually looking forward to, <laughs> to going to her. Um, um, so I want to do it um, before that because there I, it'd be awkward for me to film. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, I'm in, Laura and Emma. Awesome. So nice. Um, yeah, since yesterday, we, we already have a, quite a few people here came in. I'm so excited um, that you're coming in. Um, seriously, amazing. And honestly, I love the vibe of the people in this feed that will be in the groups. I can fully agree. The past three days, I mean, you never know when you do these events what type of people are going to be there, right? But I will say really friendly, really nice, very positive, like um, was very, um, like today when I started, I was telling you like, oh, today I was a little bit tired and I didn't feel as energized, but you know, through the comments and just reading and being here with you ladies, I'm, I'm pretty hyped now. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, after the 28th, what does the price go up to? So after the 28th, the all access pass disappears. We don't have it. Um, well, after the 29th, um, I believe, after the 29th, the all access pass. It, we've never actually offered an all access pass before. Um, quite a few um, current um, clients of mine have reached out to me because they also want to get the all access um, pass. Um, because it's truly really something we've never done before. Um, we only thought of this for this event. Um, we thought like this would be such a cool thing to end the year and it would be like a cool thing like with Christmas and all. We just thought like what a, that would be really nice to do. Um, and that's why um, Emma actually had the idea. And I thought like, wow, that's a really cool idea. So let's do it. Um, so yeah, after that, actually, it just doesn't exist. You can't get it. Yeah. Um, um, thanks for answering my questions and thank you for the roadmap. Looking forward to the new year. Um, could you please, could you please clarify the best route for people in JJP to join the product launch school, please? Yes, Emma, I can. So people that are in Journals and Planners Pro and have joined us as founding members, um, last August specifically, that's um, when we opened it, um, you also get access to the product loan school. You joined in August, so you got a 12-month pass until next August. So that means the product loan school you have going to be, it's going to be available until August 2024 to you. You also have the possibility to join the um, all-access pass. Pass, pass. <laughs> in order to do that, if you've already paid in full for the General and Planners Pro, you only need to pay the difference of 222 in order to, to join. Um, so, yeah, 
you can also join for anyone who really wants to get the all access pass. I had quite a few people um, ask that and some already joined um, as well. Um, Heidelberg was a great new Christmas Hallmark movie this year. Yeah, I heard about it. Heidelberg is a very beautiful, like um, almost like a children's book fantasy city. Like it looks so cute. I, I, my, my husband is from Heidelberg. I think it's such a beautiful place. I really like it. So I never seen the movie, but um, yeah, I saw uh, an uh, like a trailer once. I'm like, oh, interesting, an American movie in, playing in Heidelberg. <laughs> um, do I have to buy a domain straight away when starting? You don't need a domain at all necessarily. Um, a domain is to have a shop. You can to protect it, but um, in most cases, you won't know the brand name just yet. And we first want to check for trademarks and all of that we will be covering inside the product loan school because we want to protect ourselves legally. I'm not going overboard with all the legal things. I'm just doing that what is necessary to protect and to grow the business. And in most cases, that's like, a, you know, a good agreement with the manufacturer and trademarks need to be checked well. Uh, I bought a program before. I wish I saw you sooner. <clears throat> well, it, it's just offered to new. So um, <clears throat> yeah. I was just watching day one replay this morning and haven't finished, but I jumped into the, join this call today. So glad I did. I'm going to figure out uh, to join the all access. So nice. Very excited. I'm so excited to be working with you regularly uh, next year. Um, <clears throat> what time and how do we connect for the manufacturer call tomorrow? As soon as you join the all access pass, you're going to get a welcome email. That welcome email is going to prompt you to set up your account. And the account has um, an event calendar. And there you get it. But you also get an email. And the email has a Zoom link and um, a Google form where you can put in questions that you want the manufacturer to cover. Um, after the call, I can make sure that everything is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll check in with Raya if we can have everything sent out again just to make sure. And mm, try to save the email addresses into your contacts that you get emails from us because otherwise it could happen that it gets into spam. Unfortunately, even if you've purchased, often it can be in spam. You know, these spam filters sometimes they can be overly strict or, you know, um, flagging these things. <clears throat> uh, I have been there. It was so beautiful. Um, you mean Heidelberg? Yeah, it's pretty beautiful. I really like it as well. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward for Christmas in Heidelberg. Um, so, ladies, um, if you have any other question, feel free to ask. Um, I am more than happy to answer any question. If you want to, would you want to see how the memberships look from the inside? Because I can um, happily show you that as well. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow, we also have a Q&A. Because I actually wanted to show you some more of uh, the client success stories. And I I kind of, this afternoon, I totally forgot about it. So I would have to show it tomorrow because I have to first get all <laughs> the screenshots and everything in one place. So I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm more than happy to show you because I want to show you that this doesn't only work for me. It also works for other people. Um, very recently, we had a few different launches um, in the product, uh, in the General and Planners Pro community. I've sh um, we've shared some of these launches. Um, I shared about this, I think, yesterday as well. Um, this particular travel journal um, sold out all its 
1,000 pieces, so it made $25,000 in revenue. In little, like around two months, roughly, like maybe a week more or a week less. Like I'm not 100% sure, but I know it's less than three months. So pretty awesome results. Um, very quick. Um, and I keep saying very quick. Quick results is not always the aim, but it's nice when it happens. <clears throat> um, they are also selling very, very nicely, very well. I'm so happy, Kodija. I know you're here, so congratulations on your sales. I know uh, I saw that you are in uh, in here, so I'm very, very proud and happy that this is working out so well. <laughs> um, Juliana, with her mental health journal, she has posted in Journals and Planners Pro, she had in one day 60 plus sales of her uh, mental health journal. And it was very freshly launched. So very, very proud of that as well. And it's a beautiful journal. Let me quickly show you. Um, it's so beautiful. Let me take this belly band off. Yeah, it's very, very beautiful. Um, and the content, so nice. And keep in mind, Juliana has never done a journal planner before. Um, it's just step by step, learning how to do the content, learning how um, to talk with a manufacturer and, you know, figuring each step out um by step and then just focusing on really what is important and we will leave out any fluff and what is not important um <clears throat> so yeah done very well too these are some of the products that i have around me that i can you know quickly share but um yeah so this does not only work for me it also works very well for others um and the reason it works well is because in the end of the day, success does have certain paths. And there's a process, if you repeat it, works. Um, the reason why my business grew as well to what it grew and what seemingly seemed like overnight in the past 18 months, especially in the past 18 months, it grew very, very quickly uh, and more and more. And it is because I just repeat the process. Like if you go to the product loan school, I'm not showing you something I'm not doing myself. And um, and I'm not making it simpler for you than I'm doing it myself. Like I really do it in a very simple way. Emma has worked on a lot of projects with me. Like there's nothing fancier that I'm doing. <laughs> like... I'm doing exactly what, how I share. I do the things I we often like. I work with post-its or just with a whiteboard, thinking of ideas and keeping the steps a lot less complex than what you would think. And complexity is never really needed, I believe. Uh, I mean, it depends on the topic of. Of, of, of a business but in this type of business complexity is not needed and I feel complexity is an enemy of success because then how are we ever going to get it done like we all have lives many of us have families or people we have to take care of and you know or dogs or you know we have other things in life too so if we keep everything very complex it's hard to to get things done um, that's why I just repeat the process and I do more and more products that I'm fully passionate about, that I love. Um, I am sharing behind the scenes in the Journalism Planners Pro. I'm just developing a brand new product. It's a goal planner and a goal planner, the way that I've always wanted to have one. And I'm basically creating a product for myself, but I'm super excited to do it. And the designer that I tend to work with soon is going to be done with the design. And um, and I have done the whole process basically in front of a camera and shared like, okay, this is what I do. This is how I brainstorm. This is when I use AI to help me brainstorm. I was working with post-its. I was just 
putting the posters and figuring out like how would I want to have this planner um and you see that there's behind the scenes there's not oh like there's not like something crucial that I do and like crucial in the sense of like you wouldn't be able to do it like you you can do it and uh, I'm sure that some of you many of you would be even be able to do it better than I do now yeah. <laughs> so yeah um okay well awesome I've talked a long time I I hope you're all okay <laughs> and uh, I I'm very grateful for you all to be here um, to have been patient and stay uh, stayed for the two hours as well. Um, again, if you have any additional questions, you can um, post them. Um, I'll also try to answer as many as possible. And tomorrow we have a Q and A um, as well, where we can answer any type of questions that you might have as well. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow um you'll hear from me you'll see you'll see me tomorrow and i wish you a beautiful rest of your day and yeah thank you again bye